What's up, Internet? You're tuning in episode 134 of the Flip Screen Games Podcast, a weekly video game podcast where two best buds from different nations come together to discuss the wide, wide world of video games. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined as always by my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Max Wright. Ahoy, Welcome ahoy. back, bud. And I guess April Fools, Thank I don't you know. Thank very much. It was... Yeah, well, ah, you got me. You're not welcome back. Is that what you're saying? Got your ass. You're never welcome Get back. Get the fuck out of here. It's good to keep this rivalry up. It's good. See, and you know, I, I like we we talked about in 2024 we were going to squash the beef, and it's just the heat's too hot. You know, mm-hmm. you got you've got to turn it down to a simmer. You know, we're we're still mm. blazing hot. You can't just turn it off and expect yeah. it to be off. You know, you've got to let it simmer down. By the end of the year, we'll be. Bar, best buds, fast friends. Oh, so it's like we're it's like uh we're we're cooking down a, like a wine, you know? We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, well, yeah, it's like it's like we with the pastas on boil. You got to now turn it all the way down to two, let it simmer. Mm. You know, you don't want it to you don't want it to boil over. Let you know? these flavors we, get to know each other. Let them emulsify exactly. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly, okay, exactly. I like it. I like where your heads. I don't at. know why I'm saying fast friends like we've not known each other for what, five years at this point. So. A, a really long time at this point. Yeah, yeah. Six, six years maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. But that's the thing. You're saying fast friends because we only decided to be friends this year, right? Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Before yeah, that, yeah. we were we were uh, frenemies. You know, we were, we were yeah, rivals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like in the second series of Jackie Chan Adventures when uh, the gigantic the two Toru uh, decides to be a decides to be a good guy. I'm I'm floored, floored that someone else just brought up Jackie Chan Adventures on oh, a podcast mate. and it wasn't. I've never felt closer to you than I do right there now. Yeah, I, I do these things for you. <laughs> Let me just go back to my Pete notes and think of find something else that I can talk about. <laughs> oh man, great face turn that one, right? Great face turn. Yeah. I love a face turn, frankly, yeah. in any media. But like taking the big silent bruiser and having him be the the face turn, oh. the the happy chef, like the the yeah. quiet, gentle chef. Love it. I love it. Comes friends with the little girl, you know. Becomes yeah. Jade, right? Becomes yeah. uh, uncle's apprentice. Great yeah. To, okay. I, you know, frankly, I could talk about Jackie Chan adventures for longer than I think the people would like. So <laughs> April Fool's, this is a video game podcast. Uh, we're going to talk about all the April Fool's stuff that happened this week. And then on the back half of the show, we're going to talk about what we're playing and jump into a couple questions from y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, Max and I thought it would be fun to, to talk a little bit about uh, some of the April Fool's stuff that, that did pop off this week. Um, just because, I mean, it's, it's like, I don't know. I guess I don't follow any other industry closely but it's so funny to me that the games industry has like decided to hold hands and be like we all lie today right like <laughs> yeah we all we all ruin everyone's day because it's it's there are there have been some in the past where like it's been like oh oh and like it's a it's a shame that it's an april fool's joke yeah absolutely yeah, I think it's the worst day of the year because people just people fall into it they you know companies go they clearly know what we want and then they they sort of tease it in a way and like even yesterday i saw someone talking about um so there was like a, some silk song news and i still don't know then people are still talking about it today is that true i don't know what's going on you know has it actually been listed for xbox like it's on there but what's that do? i don't know Who knows? sick Who prank knows? Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. but i do think it's like it's it's one of the most annoying days of the year because while there are some genuinely funny ones and some obvious ones there are some that are just like i would really like that and someone has just lied about it like I remember years ago we used to have the april 4th nintendo direct all the time people would always be like there was a direct and I think Nintendo Life's one this year was they were doing a podcast about a direct that hasn't had didn't actually happen. It was it was it was just they released a video that was called like that Nintendo Direct was wild, wasn't it? And they must have I didn't listen to it, but um, I, like I think that sort of stuff's fine. But like try, pretending to be an official company making an official statement about something that people want that isn't obviously a joke, I think is frustrating. Um, yeah, it, it, it's like it's always a bummer uh, when that ends up happening, right? But like I, I think when it's like the obvious outlandish bit um mm-hmm. that's always like well received i think uh at least for yeah, me I think if they can be funny yeah, yeah, yeah. like like, I, a, like an, it's probably not on the list here but discord's one uh from yesterday which which is funny for a couple of reasons like they so they basically they introduced loot boxes they there was a when you logged in there was a notification that said there's now loot boxes there was a youtube video sort of that was like introducing loot boxes to discord right funny thing about that is is that because they put that in the notification every t- so any, any, uh, anytime anyone logged into discord that notification would come up and the video was also playing in the background of that uh it overtook gta 6 the gta 6 trailer as like the fastest growing youtube <laughs> video of all time and that's has, really like, funny i think with, within the same time frame that <laughs> gta 6 got 95 million views this had like 600 million views or something ridiculous like that because 
every single person that opened Discord had that video auto playing. So every time they did it, it would do it. And the guys from Discord were like, how have we done this? Like, how have what? we accidentally made a view bot that's, that's supposedly not possible? <laughs> but here we are, we've done it. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a that is that is really one. wild. Uh, I, the one of the ones that 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 really worked for me this year uh, was I, I thought the um, the Pokemon uh, announcement was really funny that they were yeah. they were like um, teasing like a new addition to like Pokemon Worlds, and then it's like oh, it's Pokemon Sleep, right? <laughs> you know, they had yeah, like Pokemon all these interviews, World like, Championship, yeah, with all these like fake you know champions and everything, like, yeah, ready for the uh, that's 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 funny. That, that is was a good, good bit. Pokemon have done some great ones before. Do you remember? Um, I know we're going to um, talk yeah, we about can some favorites yeah, later, can, but but the, we can mix in old ones. It's fine. There was um, when when they did Google Maps and Pokemon teamed up to like you had to go around Google Maps finding the Pokemon, and, yeah. and that was a good one that then span off to become Pokemon Go, which is sort of a game that I hold very dear to my heart and have played many many hundreds yeah. of hours of just roaming around, you know. And we talk about that game almost ten years old now. Yeah, my God, messed up. <laughs> yeah that is messed up but like it's one of those things that it's one of those games that like for me never really went away for ages so when i'd be like oh i'm gonna play pokemon go I'd be like oh i remember that game and i'm like what do you mean you remember it it was three years ago and it's still going strong like what do you mean you remember that game because everyone has that that first two week fondness you know sure they screwed their own game up but man 20 yeah that was that was, it was a magical summer though you know it was a magical summer it continued to be many magical summers for me mate i'll be honest it, it, it never went away for me i'm glad i'm glad one of the other ones from this Very year much. that I wanted to call out um, reminded me of one of my old favorites is uh, IGN put together um, like a faux one for, um, well, what did they call it? Uh, it was the uh, Virtual Boy Pro. Yeah. And Virtual it, Boy Pro, yeah. Which I thought very, was really very good well bit, done. you know, and it's obviously like your Switch, like turning into a, a Virtual Boy kind of situation. And they like had a bunch mm -hmm. of like fake games cooked up and everything. Like I, I thought that was like a very... It's a good bit, well observed, you know, and like, especially with like the timeliness of like Apple Vision, like, and everything, and mm -hmm. it kind of being like AR, a bunch of like AR experiences as well was was something I thought was was funny. Um, I thought they did a really good job of making it look like a Nintendo trailer yeah. as well, like a really good job where it's like the the millennial Got on the couch in their you know? very clean, tidy home, sitting on the couch playing a game, and then they put it on and it becomes into the game. And then they sort of start going into the jokes of like the Tom Nook being like this this dodgy like landlord yeah. guy that you're talking to through the your headset. It's really, yeah, really good. Really, really funny. Um and it reminded me of one of my my favorite old ones, which was when like it was years ago now when they made the uh, the Legend of Zelda movie trailer. That was another really, mm -hmm. really good classic, one. Yeah. Classic. Really like massively uh because that one got a lot of people that was like before we'd sort of yeah, developed a bullshit totally. detector in, in ourselves as like when we were younger and that one like it reminds me a lot of do you remember how now this might be either a bit too specific or a bit old for some people but do you remember when you used to go on and download like musical flying wire and shit like that mm -hmm. and there was someone who uh was posing as a uh, system of a down doing a legend of zelda uh like yes. theme song cover with lyrics like it really reminds me of that of like because everyone bought into that because there was no way of really verifying that it wasn't system of a down or that it that it wasn't an official thing and all that sort of stuff but because it's one of those things that's like fat was bandied around as fact without because there's no way of looking there was no way of verifying that this is how the like, internet was back then right like, yeah <laughs> yeah very wild a West. lawless wasteland <laughs> yeah exactly you could do anything say anything people would go yeah yeah i agree with that so what other ones from uh from this year stood out to you uh, good or bad i guess the Cyberpunk 2077 one really made me laugh. Uh, oh my the, god, yeah. The, the floppy uh, disk. Yeah, so if you didn't... If you just, just, yeah, go on. If you didn't see it, uh, they made a post where they're like, if you missed the good old days when game installation was a true ritual, then you'll love the limited floppy edition of Cyberpunk 2077. Wish list now and be prepared for a truck full of 97,619 <laughs> 3.5-inch diskettes. So <laughs> Such, and then it's like a picture of the game with like piles and piles mm -hmm. of yellow floppy disks behind it's very good bit <laughs> yeah i think the fact that it the fact that they have only recently released like a full edit like a you know complete edition whatever they want to call it definitive yeah. edition of cyberpunk like that that did make me laugh as like something that that and also just for the sort of like the retro but futuristic thing of it all in that sort of the, the yellow that we all know from game delays like that's a yeah that was that was a good one speaking about, of you like, know there was did you yeah, see go on, go on. Mega one that they did uh is it the no, go on. So the, is he, I don't know if you uh, 
remember like back on the Genesis, right? Like there were a couple different um cards Mega that, Drive. Were, that were like uh sure. <laughs> that, that, that were expandable, right? Where it's yeah. like like yeah, you, you have Sonic, another... then you have Sonic and Knuckles, exactly. then you have Sonic inside. I had all of this shit, yeah. So they had a they had a picture of a new thing. It's uh it's like DLC. How about CLC? And it, it <laughs> looks like an old Sega ad. Uh and it says, um, you got that right. Cartridge loadable content. Experience Sonic the Hedgehog in a whole new way with a whole with a lot more features. Big head mode, got it. Sonic the Hedge, yes, ma'am. And if you're lucky, you might even get to see Sonic's big old trotters in their shoeless glory with our all new barefoot Sonic mode. Just don't make it any weirder than it already is. So get ready to stack cartridge after cartridge of glorious CLC and enhance your Sonic the Hedgehog experience like never before. Coming April 1st, 1991. And I'm it, looking at now the stack of the stack of yeah, it's uh, like five cartridges coming like. out of the chest. Yeah, <laughs> it reminds me. Have you seen that video of or that picture of the? Uh, it's like a SNES with the Game Boy attachment attached to it, and then there's like something else in there and something else in there. Then there's a yeah. Game Genie in there, and it's just like stacked full of stuff. Um, or like when you get like that, you can just uh, Daisy Chain adapters together, so you can have just a USB yeah. going through like six different adapters before it ends up going into your PC. Yeah, and in the tweet, they were like, go to your like local blockbuster to, to, yeah, brilliant. to participate. Huh. It's good. Very There's good. a couple of things in here that you know what we said earlier about are they real or are they um are they just bits? Um this this duck uh sort of survival game, Rust game. Yeah, I thought this was a real game. I genuinely it is, thought this no, was it a is real a real game. game. Oh, it is a real game. It is, it is. Yeah. So that's another thing that I love is when when companies reveal actual games that are like silly and you're like, oh, I wish this was real. And then it's like, guess what it is? Go fucking mm-hmm. save it now. Um, but yeah, it's got a Steam page and everything. Did it, I didn't oh it does. I'm clicking on it now. Yeah, so it's called, oh, it's called yeah. Duckside. Um, it's being made wow, by uh okay. Tiny Build Riga. And uh it's basically like Rust, or I guess like Daisy or whatever. Um yeah, yeah. but ducks. So there's like it's it's a persistent world survival. There's PvP. There's PVE base building, all that stuff. Um, but but yeah, everybody's a duck, and uh, and you can like fly around and everything. And it's like it looks it looks genuinely ridiculous and also fun. I, you know, it, I I just, I just like just from the look of it, I was like, they've not put a lot of effort into this 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 April Fool's game, and I don't blame them. But this is the this is a real game. I did not know that. Yeah. On the flip side, did you see there was a game called Content Warning that came out yesterday, and their April Fool's joke was that for the first twenty four hours the game is free. Um, no. So it's it's been and gone now. We sort of missed out on that. But I, I mean, I, I picked it up because you know, I'm on the that's zeitgeist. Cool. I'm, I got my finger on the pulse. But yeah, <laughs> they, their April Fool's joke was our game that's just come out is now free for twenty four hours. Which Solid. I think is a good one. Solid bit. I mean, that's the thing, right? It's like, I think if you can take advantage of, of like the, the moment that you know is going to happen, like, yeah, Mm -hmm. because I mean, like you said, there are always like those announcements that people are like, oh, this isn't real. Like what a bummer. Um, and it's, it's cool when it is like, oh no, yeah, we just made a goofy thing. It's real. Go, go check it out. This is a real thing. Um, There was another game that got announced as well. It was, uh, Armor Reforger, Tiny Wars. And it's like, like army soldiers, like shooter, um, which looks really fun. Well, like armor you're... is is the the base of like Daisy, Ross, Pudgy. Yep. All of those games are sort of built in armor. Armor three, I think, is the one they do it. So yeah, that's, I think uh... you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, is... this looks cool. Tiny Wars is like a oh new... yeah, yeah, I see this. Yeah, new wasn't game there a it... game like this before that was like an actual like um, toy soldier shooter? There was, I think it was called Sarge's Heroes. No, wait, that's the Army Men, right? Was what it was called. That was the PS1 one. I mean, like, recently, oh. more recently, there was, like, a full, like, it was, like, uh, sort of, like, grounded or Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, where it's, like, huge levels, tiny people, you're playing as army men, and you're shooting, and, uh, like, an FPS, yeah. and that was pretty cool. But this looks very much like that, but I assume this is also a... a no, no, I think this is real, real as well. One, right? This is a fake one. Yeah, that's what I'm oh, saying. Oh, God, how many of these are uh, There's real? one other real one, so I'm going to tell you right now that it's real, Um, and because this is a thing that oh. I also thought was very funny, which was Among Us... Uh has a new mode that's from now or it's from the first until the eighth so it's like the whole week of of april of the first of april and um it's uh it's called long mode and it's just like they just stretched all the characters out and gave them super long necks and it's just like yeah, i'm looking at this now. it's just like a funny little bit you know and it's like yeah that's like that's a cute like way to freshen things up and you know like have people give them a reason to go play again or whatever mm-hmm. and to keep it around as well like that's that's always good yeah uh, it's um, like to actually have it be playable for a bit. 
another f- one that I thought was uh funny um oh no you know what i guess there was one other one there was a, a li- there's a limited time event with uh, dead by daylight that's mm-hmm. um there's an oni that's like kaiju size and it'll like step on you and they made like a you know uh that's satisfying somebody's king sure. yeah <laughs> yeah um but uh one of the other ones that i thought was funny was um was the power wash simulator one did you see that where it was like no. they literally just took gameplay of power wash and played it in re- reverse and we're like it's the dirt <laughs> mode you know <laughs> or like you can re-dirty all the stuff that you clean <laughs> it's just like yeah, that's, good. that's simple i loved it yeah and it's i, I like that because it's like a it's just a good joke but also like man like i love a low effort bit like that and they're just like all right there you go everybody yeah I thought similarly, I think my favorite one of anyone, uh, and I, I was saving this for last, was uh, the Elden Ring announcement, which was fucking cruel. Yeah, absolutely really cruel, cruel and also extremely funny. Yeah, uh, if, really you well done. if you haven't seen it, because um, like obviously, right, like everybody is is waiting for Elden Ring DLC. It's supposed to be coming this year. And they have what looks like a very like real announcement, right? And it's like Elden Ring expansion. And it just start slowly expanding until it's mm-hmm. past the screen and it's just like, you gotta be kidding me because <laughs> i when i started watching it like i obviously I knew it was a bit already um but i was assuming that they were going to just be like teasing like a fake dlc not that it would literally just be like a goddamn rickroll you know like yeah. i'm just sitting there waiting for something and it's like it oh, cool. get bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> i think uh the, the only one that i think this year that that because I was, I was on the, look, you know, April 1st, I know, I'm like, right, anything you read today, don't believe it, you know, or, right. or at least look into it properly. And um, Game Explained did a video um, that was like a Metroid Prime 4 update, and they'd taken the old footage of Takahashi, and they'd put like a, a, a they changed the color of his jacket to green to sort of differentiate it slightly. And because it's in Japanese, you know, you're not going to know uh what he's actually saying unless you speak japanese or you can uh so that the subtitles were then changed to being like oh here's the latest on metro Prime 4 it's now a golf game which for a split second when i saw the thing i was like oh finally then i was like oh no wait it's the only one that almost got me and that felt like a cruel you know attempt to to play on people's desires but i mean that's the um, thing right it's like i think yeah sometimes like that's the bit right it's like it is supposed to be a little bit cruel and it's like i mean like that like the elden ring one Mm -hmm. is very like they know how bad people are like excited for this. And I bet that got a lot of people, right? Like, oh, yeah, uh, I edit. Bet, yeah. I mean, I've seen, I mean, I own a few sort of groups and um, um, like that they, they're all sort of po- people were posting and people were like, oh my God. And then people were like, oh, this is cruel. Why have you posted this? And <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, it's like either like pranks or you know, it, right? It's yeah. like, I. I don't know. I'm split on it. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't like April Fools in real life. Like, I don't prank people or anything like that. But like you said, like I think now, like going into April first, knowing that it's all going to be nonsense. Like, I'm kind of always like, all right, like who's doing what, right? Like, what are the bits this year? Um, but when you forget about it and it catches you off guard, like mm-hmm. I'm sure the Elden Ring one did for a lot of people. It's like, yeah, it's going to lead to some disappointment, but it's yeah. also kind of like you got to just laugh at it, right? Like you yeah. got to be able to just take take the take the lump and. I think the joke hits better when you are momentarily taken by it when you're like, oh, and then it and then they pull the rug out. Like that's yeah. a better joke than just like, here's a joke. Um so you know, it, it, especially when they make it look official, like the Sega one looks like an old ad, but they've taken a joke and really run with it. And um Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, I, I do appreciate that like the Pokemon one was like that too, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, this looks like an announcement, right? It looks mm-hmm. like a real world. Oh, they put a load of effort into it. Yeah. Um, it, it's like yeah hey like I, I appreciate the commitment to the bit mm-hmm. you know so uh yeah if, if y'all uh want to write in and let us know any of your favorite april fools announcements whether that's from this year or, or years past definitely uh make sure you hit us up and let us know um and there's a bunch of ways that you can get in touch and do that of course you can find all of that and much much more over at flipscreen.games that's our website where you can get involved in the community you can write into the show uh, and you can you know suggest the main topic, whatever you want to do, however you want to get involved in the community. That's the best place for you to go. Uh, while you're there, you can also find links to our Patreon and become a Patreon producer, just like Arnold J. Rimmer, Christopher Valenz, Gabriel Hasselmeyer, a.k.a. Sobe, Snackigo, Steve Stompy, Susan Likes Cats and also Boobies, Voodoo Vic, Ty the Dude, and Wakahula. Thank you all so much for your support over on Patreon.com 
slash flip screen games. Y'all the reals to the real. And we greatly appreciate your support of this and all of our sister shows. Remember, if you want to go above and beyond, just like they did get a bunch of perks and goodies, you can head over there and show your support as well. But of course, any way you want to get involved, head over to flipscreen.games and you'll find links that you can click on that won't cost you a pretty penny, but help us out a lot and get you a bunch of other cool content from our sister shows, our YouTube channel, however you choose to get involved. That's the best place to go. And we thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the show. All right, Max. So we we I'd got like some... to, I'd like to hop in here because, oh, go for because it. the because the people have been begging, right? Yeah. We have a question here from Andrew Valentine. We've been we've been holding off on it because we've had a very busy week last week of, of different things. We had our interview, we had our pepper grinder review, two great games. Go check people those out, know. by the way, those episodes if you didn't watch them. them the people want to know, I want to know, I'm sure Steve would want to know, but he's busy. Uh, have you played any Bellatro? Have you been playing Bellatro? Um, what do you think of Bellatro? Talk to me about Bellatro. Tell me everything about Bellatro. I, I really like it. Uh, I've yeah. played a lot of it, yes. Yeah, um, yeah. Much, much like the two of you, as soon as I was done with, with uh, my Pepper Grinder review and I was able to kind of you know, um, diversify my time a little bit, um, not being against Embargo, I was like, yeah, hey, let me jump into this. It's like a, a good like little TV game kind of thing. And I haven't played much else since then because mm -hmm. I'm so addicted to it right now. Uh, I am not great at it. And I don't yeah. think it's because I'm bad as much as like I, I have gotten. So here's what's happened. I regularly build a good machine and get like deep in a run and then we'll have just dog water luck at like the mm. worst time like i've had four or five runs end on the last boss fight at oh, the no. end of the eighth you know ante or whatever with the empty well the, the the final like boss antis are always like the the hard ones either it's the uh, one that's like a, a big blind that is bigger than you could ever imagine especially when you're at the level you're at or it's something like disable your joker um I've I've had that one more than once, and I'm like, how am I supposed to win? Like that's yeah. like it's what I or you like know. You like, have to sell a joker, and it's like, well, which one of these joke? I've got this far. Which one of these jokers am I going to be able to ruin without just destroying the whole machine that I built? Uh huh. To right. then also win, you know. Um, yeah. It's good to have a dud in the in the in the range. Have you actually beaten a? a yes. You, yeah. Uh, I I finally got through one run uh, using the blue deck, which is the one that gives you an extra hand. Yeah. Um. A couple nights ago, I forget. Um, and I, I've had one more successful run since then mm -hmm. um, with the red deck, which is the extra discard one. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, like so I, ended, decks, I ended surprised. up building a really good machine with both of them. I think I've found that the strategy that works best for me is like um, choosing something that has a modifier that just continues to grow based on like a type of hand, you know, like yeah. the, the first win that I had was I had um, the Joker that every time that you play a successful hand, it gets an, a modifier added. And if you use a discard, it removes it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what I did was I had that. And then I had a bunch of other cards that were obviously influencing my modifiers. I don't remember all the jokers I had, but the one that ended up making that strategy viable was I got the, the card that counts every card that you play towards your score. So yeah. I would just get rid of cards. I wanted to discard in hands and would intentionally be like, okay. Oh, you know what else? I had a couple other things that stacked based on pairs. Or two pairs. Oh yeah, so yeah I know very easily be like, I have a pair to get rid of these three low level cards, and then I can shuffle and get a straight or get a, a flush or like something that's more valuable um, that I've leveled up. And I would never ever try for like three of a kind or four of a kind because it's like yeah. I keep playing low level hands and they just stack really high because I have yeah. all these multipliers or whatever. Um, and I had leveled all of them up to like five or whatever, so like the base amount of of uh, chips that i was getting was already so rewarding you know yeah yeah um, i think it's uh, there's a lot to be I, yeah. th I think that i very much undervalued chip value until sort of like i don't know like 20 hours in where i was like only yeah. doing plus multipliers and times multipliers and then i was like well i'm you know i'm getting towards the end here and i'm just don't have enough to to boost me up and what i was missing was to start initially with like 200 chips you're then timesing that and multiplying that however many times yeah. They're the same thing. You're adding multipliers and then you're timesing those multipliers by however many. It's like, okay, you need to have a good balance here. And I was very much like, I, I was carried for my first 20 hours. Just for record, I'm on like 67 hours played. 
um, my my sort of first twenty hours were just like only focusing on the multipliers. Whereas now I'm mature and I'm you know more of an esteemed gentleman at this game. I, I was making I that same time for more balance. I was making that same mistake up until my first successful run, and I found that the thing that made the difference was. And now, and now I'm starting to remember what the other jokers I had was. The other one I had was the one that every time you do a two pair, it increases its chip multiplier. Yeah, I was like, this is brilliant, right? Like I yeah. can. Just and I had and the other one I had gave me a, a multiplier based on playing pairs. So I would just keep doing these low hands to get rid of weak cards. And then I would go all in on like the stuff that had a huge multiplier. Cause it's like when you max out flush or or the mm -hmm. um straight, it's like the base chips are like a hundred or two hundred or whatever. I forget what it is, but it's high. So like even if you're not getting a ton of multipliers based on that type of hand, you can just get whatever. Um, but then the other the other joker that I had success with in my next uh, good run was that it gives you a multiplier based on how many times you've played a type of hand. Because mm -hmm. then it's just like, all right, great, like do the same thing, right? Like yes. whatever other jokers you get. Like I got one that was like for straights. I was like, okay, I'll only play straights, you know, and like that'll just be my strategy, you know. There's a deck you unlock later in the game where half the cards are hearts, half the cards are spades. Ooh, um, there's no diamonds, there's no clubs, right? That is very much a, I'm getting straights all the time. So when you get the card that's like... Uh, flushes, you mean, right? Flushes, sorry. Yeah, that's that. Straights are when it's... Uh, Num yeah, one, numbers two. in a sequence. Flushes yeah, is yeah, when yeah, it's yeah. five of the same color. All the same suit. Yeah, so I'm going for two. flushes. So you have the one where it's like... Um, uh, every time you play a hand, you know, multiplier is... Add, add, yeah, add the multiplier... Oh my God. Add to the multiplier the number of times you played that hand. By the end of the round, I'm doing... I've done like 60 of these things. Right, right you know? yeah. And um, there's there's jokers you unlock by winning a run by not playing a certain type of hand. So when I I spent a little while like trying to unlock the one where I like just don't play a flush, don't play a flush, don't play a flush. And when I unlock that, every now and again it'll be like times two when you play a flush, great, okay. And then play a flush, you get plus ten. Play a flush, you get this many chips, like great. And you sort of you really do start to build around the one sort of that that's been the deck that i'm like i'm like right i need to try and get to, to level 12 i want to get past 12 i want to unlock the the um there's like a voucher that you get when you get past anti 12 i've been going with that deck and i'll get to anti 11 every time and i'll I'll just have not built anything good enough by the end of that um but i'm that that's been what i spent a lot of my time doing it's like unlocking new cards and, and using that deck um and there's another deck i've been using a lot as well which is the the, the yellow deck which you start with ten dollars because yeah. my god starting with money being able to just like skip the first two antes and pick up some early rewards, go straight to a boss, go to a shop, like you know, it, it's so good. And I think also, um, um, people are, like it took me a little while to realize that I should be skipping antes and that the the that's bonuses something for skipping I'm are still well worth it. I think figuring out like the risk reward of of like when is the right time to do it because there are times when I've done it mm -hmm. and I'm like this is it totally makes sense to do it right now because of this thing or this thing or whatever right like yeah like one that I often find that I I will take them up on is especially if it's like in a later ante is uh if you skip this one you'll get 15 if you win the boss because it's like well i'm not going to make 15 by yeah. winning this anyway so i may as well right like if i don't yeah. need it right now yeah right if i know i can get, generate the amount of points i need to win the boss fight and i'm not uh depending on myself to buy cards after these next two rounds and that's fine you know yeah, if you if you know that you are capable of getting to it and like you i generally will skip the first two because i know that 600 isn't a lot to get but Sometimes you might start with the one that's like, oh, every everything in the shop is free after this. Great, cool, I'll have that. Or you know, your next uh, card is guaranteed to be a, a negative card or a, a foil card. And it's like, I could do with one of those. Cool, skip, whatever. Um, or the ones where it's like, pick two jokers from this pack. Great, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Like, There is a lot of benefits, especially when you've got the boss ante that's like um, uh, debuff all cards that you played this round. It's like, great, I just won't play any cards and I'll have my full deck <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. available. You know? Totally. I also mm -hmm. love, uh, I've had the one a couple times. Um, I think it's a tarot card, maybe. It's 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 one mm -hmm. of the special cards, I think, um, where it's like, buy this and you'll get the total value of your jokers. And it's like, yeah. if you get that at any point after the first couple, it's like, all right, well, so I'm paying $2 to get six. Great. You know? It's like, yeah. Stuff Same like that. It's like double your money up to 20. Like, well, if I just spend three, I can get 15 back. And yeah. There's a... a, a an achievement I want to get. I don't know if it actually unlocks anything or it might unlock a joker, 
where you you have to hold four hundred dollars at once, but that you can't do it in like the challenges. You have to do it in like an unseeded normal run. Oh, and that's hard, man, because you want to yeah. be spending to make money. And there's a few times where I'm like, I understand what I need to do to get it, but like the luck of there's a card that um, every time you play a face card, it becomes gold. There's a card that every time you play a gold card, you get three dollars. Even you know whether they're in your hand or you play them, you get the three dollars. There's one that makes all cards count as face cards. That combination, you turn your entire deck gold, and then every single time you're playing, you're getting three. Every time you're not playing a card, you get three gold. Like you need to. Oh my god, know. that reminds me. Go Have on. you gotten the Joker? There's the one where every time you play a card, it adds four chips to it. Every time you play a card, yeah, any card, yeah. No. Oh Maybe. my god, that one, that one snowballs I'm, I'm like fucking crazy. That was, I think, in my first win too, uh, in the one that had the multiplier. So it was like every time I did a successful run, I'd add a multiplier, and every time I played five cards, each one of them would get four chips added to it, and it goes every time. So it'll be like you're playing an ace that you've played two or three times already, and then it's like it's oh, scoring that one. twenty Sorry, points. I have done that. Yes, I took it's you mean awesome. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you have it with the one of every time you play a card, it scores. It's they they start stacking like crazy. Yeah. It's like you can turn all your twos into tens. Like, two, and then it's weird you know, when you ramp. play a card and you haven't looked properly. You play a card and it's like, what? Why is this its base value instead of being like twenty or thirty? Yeah, I'm looking it now. I've actually got, nuts. I've got a hundred. I've unlocked 135 of of, of you know 150 jokers. There's still some here that I've not even like seen. There's some I've not unlocked. And I understand those ones, but there's ones here that I've like I've just not picked up. And I think it's I've played so many rounds of this game that I don't know how. I've I've not done it. Let's see my stats. Let's I think it's stats. funny because that's the thing that I think makes the game so difficult, right? Is that like it, there's so little because like I feel like with something like like I'm thinking of like Hades, right? Like mm -hmm. other roguelites that I've played where it's like you get a handle on what works for you and then you can kind of just like, I'll wait until that drops or I'll use this and then I'll switch to that or whatever. With Balatro, it's like you really, really have to just kind of like it's like it's like building like a, a you know the Rube Goldberg machine, is that what I'm thinking of? Right? Where it's yeah, like, you yeah, have to, just, you just yeah, have to build with whatever yeah. parts you come across. So it's like, if you get garbage, you get garbage. And like, that's what, that's what playing poker is like, yeah. right? Like it's, it's interesting that the ways in which they've built on the game still feel true to poker and that like, you know, obviously mm -hmm. skill and planning and everything is part of it, but also like, you might have built a perfect machine and then draw bad cards and run out of discards and you're fucked. Like I've had that happen yeah. multiple times. Have you worked just out? like I just don't pull the cards I need, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. There's also an element of knowing what what orders play the cards in, what order your jokers need to be in. Because it took me a little while to work out that you can swap the order around and that they they go from left yeah. to right. And there are going to be cards that like you know times two uh, the first face card you play. Well, generally the face card's on the left, so you need to pick that face card up, drag it to the right hand side, play that last. Because otherwise you're not going to get the bonus till, till the, you're going to get the bonus at the beginning. You might be getting multipliers you know, throughout the whole thing. So to put it at the end and then times it by two, or, you know, you have jokers that it's like a times three joker. You don't want that halfway through because you're going to have pluses in there. You want to have the times is at the end right. so that all your pluses happen and then you times that total number. And that took me a little while. It wasn't until I got the joker where it like shuffles and flips all of your jokers on the, on the last round that I was like, okay, fine. So but I, I learned like, oh. that. I didn't learn that until there's a card that um, it's every time you select a blind, it de it destroys the Joker card, I think, to the right. Yes, and then it yeah, adds the knife, three multiplier, the dagger, one of the two. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god, I can move them. Like, what the mm -hmm. fuck? And then I was like, oh, so that's. I thought it was just kind of like luck of the draw of like, yeah, yeah, it would be great if that happened later, but I didn't get it that way. You know, I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, that's nuts. There's, there's, um, there's a card. There's two cards. There's one that's uh the blueprint which is copies the card to the right uh -huh. or the joker card to the right so it, it always does the effect of that so you can be like per hand be like right i'm gonna put that here yeah and i knew and you could do that with hand, your hand, hand but i was like i had no idea because yeah. i had never had a system that interacted with the jokers in that way and i was just like oh i didn't you know can't move them like pfft. There's one that's called, I'm just like, I'm looking at them now. There's one called Brainstorm, which copies the ability of the leftmost oh. Joker. So you want to sort of like know what sort of at the end. So, you know, what you don't want to do is then put your times is down there and be a getting them because you, right. know, you don't get the benefit of that. You know, there's some really wacky jokers. There are some that I've not really seen the benefit of or that I don't, I don't, I haven't sort of thought of the combination there, but there's clearly so much thought going into a lot of these where it's like some that go really well together. Um, and there's just some crazy stuff you can do. Like, you know, there's a, a friend of a friend got like 120 trillion 
as his highest ever hand. Oh I've not got further than like six um six million, something like that. It's like the highest hand I've ever played. Yeah. Um, but there are clearly some like crazy like repeating um, you know, a friend of mine that's crazy. Yeah, but... I mean, I think the highest I've gotten is like one point well, you know, whatever whatever it takes to beat the last one I got, yeah, you know, maybe yeah. a couple hundred thousand over that, but it was like not yeah, no, really, yeah. it's fucking crazy. crazy. That's yeah, nuts. you really have to. There's a um, a friend of mine's a YouTuber, and he went to like a pre-release tournament of this game, I mm. think, or like you know, a bunch of content creators all sort of got invited to go and play it. And he said that someone there, I can't remember who it was, had um, had done something in the game and set up like a repeating thing that the developers were like, yeah. oh god, like we need to undo that because you created the game's just constantly going, yeah, ding, 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 and it just didn't stop. <laughs> It's so funny to me um, because, like, I think the the most, like, mathematical game um, that I've ever gotten really deep into and that I'm very good at is is Pokemon, right? Like, competitive Pokemon. I, mm-hmm. I can play at a very high level. Um, but I can't do math like that, right? Like, I can't. And, like, with no. Pokemon, it's, like, chess where it's, like, I can memorize what the pieces do. Right. And it's like, I don't need to, I, I don't need to understand the math. I can memorize it. Right. Whereas with this, it's like mm-hmm. to be able to do something like that, it's like requires a level of like a- analytical thinking that like, I, I just, you know, it's, it's like, wow. Oh my God. Like, yeah, I that's don't, very I don't clever. That. And I mean, I guess also lucky, right. That you got the cards you needed to do that, but like that you can yeah, read the there, tea there leaves are, and see it that way. is like I very, have. it's a type of thinking that is, so oh, impressive to me yeah there are theoretical combos that i i have thought of while i'm playing i'm like oh this really good with that and it should they've, they've, they've just never yeah. sort of worked for me there there have been some combos that really work um and like one i can think of is where um you all of the black cards are the same all of the red cards are the same so you know oh, they, they basically awesome. they count as the same then there's also a card that's like if you if the card if the hand contains one of each suit um then you get like three times multi. So every hand I was playing, if it as long as it had two reds and two blacks in it, I was getting three times multi. So I was just going, I was just going ham. Yeah. Like it was just like, and it was like cards that um, repeat other cards and blah, blah, blah. And it was just, it was going crazy. And I think that's where I got to uh, like my 6 million and I got right to the end and I just didn't quite nail it on the last moment. But um, but yeah, that was, that was a wicked one. That was really, really good. That's one. really cool. So I'm just looking through all my jokers now. I, uh, I I would love to keep talking about this one, but I know there's a couple other games I I want to chat about, and that I know some of the the folks have asked about. Uh, so this is this game up until now, to my knowledge, has been your game of the year. I know you spent absolutely some time with my game of the year so far, which is uh, of course Pepper Grinder, which we reviewed last week. If you want to go check Pepper that out, um, mm-hmm. what do you think? I'm really enjoying it. I think everything you've said is is correct. I think I think I knew from the demo already that I was going to enjoy it to the level that I am, and I am, I I am finding it uh, like the the I think Andrew Valentine says something in the Discord about the first boss, but he like took him ten tries. Yeah. Same for me. Like I was really not expecting it to be as difficult as it was because the combat has been so negligible. Like you said in your review that the the, the enemies in the combat are really just obstacles to overcome yeah not, and then you like, get to the boss fight you and you're like do. oh this is and... like a totally different kind of level yeah like yeah this hits like this hits me and it can hit me hard yeah. and it killed me a bunch of times you know um I, i'm on this or i'm like two or three levels into the, the second world the music slaps you were correct about the music it really reminds me of did you ever play um did you ever play oh my god i can't I mean, give me some details thing. uh it's the game where you've so it's the game where like you're the Viking and you go through there's like Volgar? a block of enemies. No. It's like a puzzle game. No, grindstone? there's like, a block of enemies. It's like a puzzle game where you yeah. go like Grindstone. The music reminds me a lot of the music in Grindstone, which has a fantastic soundtrack that I still listen to game rules. regularly. Um, and I actually need to I need to rebuy that on Steam um, during the next sale, I think. So I do want to get back to it. I just don't want to have to play it on Switch anymore. Um, that's a that's a banger game, and that the sound banger soundtrack. And this reminds me of that sort of style of soundtrack where it's it's. It's like it's like a different sort of it's a mix and it's different and it's 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 nice. The the game is great. It looks fantastic. Like it really I'm, it does a lot of like work for setting like vibe for a mm-hmm. level. And mm-hmm. like the fact that each one has such a different tone, it like really gives each world its own flavor. Yes. Yeah, I appreciate that the the bonus levels have like that thing I like about bonus levels where it's like here's one feature we have introduced 
we're going ham on it and here's a bunch of ways we're using it and like it, i think mario wanda did, did a lot of that mario Odyssey yeah. does a lot of that where it's like here's one concept we're doing it to sort of the the most we can do it and i think that um yeah the, the bonus levels, i'm gonna sneeze i'm so sorry <coughs> bless you <coughs> thank you the bonus levels the one that i played did that really well of like here's you've used the cannons before so here's the cannons a bunch of times it's oh like, yeah, my really god that one is on so them. fun yeah mm -hmm. it's like you the, like the precision it's like reminds me of like donkey kong right yes, of like exactly, the yeah. trying to line up the barrels and everything it's like oh, yes, really yeah, fun. yeah yeah see i'm really enjoying it. i've only played like an hour and a bit i think like i said i'm only on the sort of second level the game is i think it is going to be shorter than than i expected um because i feel like if i was just to sit down and focus on it and not sort of go back into because i've so far i'm sort yeah. of finishing every level uh with all of the coins so i'm not really mm -hmm. having to go back very much but i know that's going to change as i get on I, I can see this sort of being like a five or six hour one for me but that's what we're in the sweet spot of what you yeah. want from a game sometimes especially when i've got sort of big games to play loads coming up that i want to play like there's so much happening just to be able to sort of finish this and get this out. i think what's great about it is if you want it to be like a one and done like bite-sized thing you can just run through it and it'll be like a really great time mm -hmm. um but like you know you mentioned andrew valentine like i know he like me was immediately like as soon as he ran credits was like okay i want 100 percent this you know um yeah and i think it's it's one of those games that's like you know it's rewarding as a five hour experience i rolled credits and i think i had like eight and a half hours i was like between eight and ten um i don't quite remember because i kept playing after i finished it but um but yeah, yeah you know and i think like that was because i i wanted to do all the side levels and i wanted to you know dig a little bit deeper and and uh check everything out. obviously i was mm -hmm. reviewing it too so it kind of you know behooved me to to check some of those things out but it wasn't like i was pulling teeth to do so right like i i wanted to explore that extra content because it's just it's just fun. Yeah. It's one of those yeah. games that's just fun to control, you know, and like anything that you can do in it is a good time. Mm -hmm. There are times you want to get you get to the end of a game, and you're like, oh, I want this to be over. Like with Super Mario Sunshine, I remember, like, right, I'm just gonna. This when I played it a couple of years ago, I was like, I'm just gonna get enough st um, suns, sun, sun sprites, shine sprites, whatever, to yeah. get me to the final. Like, I'm ready to I'm wrap up with this game. Now. I don't want to play anymore. Whereas there are. Yeah, whereas there are games where you're like, oh, this is almost over. Okay, I'm going to go back and just do a bunch of content before I get to the end because I don't, you know, I want to soak yeah. up as much of this as I can. And I think by the end of this one, I'm going to, I'm going to feel the same. But like I say, very early days for me in it. Um, but I'm looking I'm glad, you're to. I'm glad it. that it's hitting. Yeah, I am too. I'm glad that it's hitting the way that I thought it might when I first played that demo. And I was like, oh, like I've been watching this game for so long. It's always looked fun. It's now in my hands, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm still feeling that. So great. speaking but, of games um, that you've got in your hands, and I think you're enjoying. Mm -hmm. how like mm -hmm. give me the rundown on dragon's dogma 2 because i i'm very interested in this obviously you and i talked about this a couple of weeks ago on the show that we were both interested in playing it at release um and then you know it came out and i feel like the dialogue around it it really feels like who you're asking depends on what you get right where it's like I, it feels like the yeah, inverse I, of the I cyberpunk thing where if you're playing it on pc it's bad and if you're on consoles it's amazing and so I think it's 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 strange, right? That the conversation about PC uh, performance has been sort of negative, and I think it's been slightly overblown because people on console are used to, you know, when you have high end systems, you should be able to play like a AAA game at like over a hundred FPS, right? Whereas you could have the highest end system you can, and you're only going to get like I don't know seventy FPS, and it's always going to dip in the towns. There's no way you can play this game that's not going to have dips and things like that. I'm currently so I've I've spent a thousand pounds on my computer in the past like month. Not specifically to play this game because I, you know, I broke something. You know, I was off for a week. I had to get something else, and that sort of steadily evolved. So I played Dragon's Dogma, and I was disappointed with the performance. You know, I'm, I'm still, I'm still getting like 45, close to 60 FPS uh, out in the world. But as soon as I was in the towns, I was getting like 25 FPS. Um, obviously, that's that's not what you expect. And on console, it's, it seems even worse. It's like they've had to add a 30 FPS mode to it on consoles because people just were. were you know, there was no way to have a stable 30 FPS, uh, 30 FPS frame rate, you know. Um, so I I bought a new processor for my computer because it was like the last um, the last thing on my computer that wasn't like newish or like, you know, quite high spec. It was like, yeah, I bought this budget in 2020. Um, maybe it's time for an upgrade. I can give my old stuff to Kat. Um, so I bought a new processor, sort of the, the final sort of top end one for AM4, which is now a dead platform. 
Um, but I thought, right, let's just get the, the sort of top of the range for now to carry me through. And the improvements have been massive. Like I wasn't expecting it to be as much of an improvement as it is. I'm now getting like a pretty locked 60. I've managed to turn my graphics nice. all the way up to maximum. I've got ray tracing on. I've got everything up really high. The game looks gorgeous. It runs really well, but it does still have frame dips. Um, I do think there's so many of the conversations about Dragon's Dogma 2 have been um, dominated by like the microtransactions, which I don't agree are microtransactions because it's not. I think a microtransaction is you buy something and then you go back and you buy it again. You go back and you buy it again. Talk, you go talk back to me about that it. too, because because I like I'm not totally familiar like with what the microtransaction situation is. I've just seen the controversy that people are like annoyed about it, and I saw mm-hmm. that you know people were patting CD Projekt on the back as they're like, I don't think it makes sense in single player game. It's like, what's yeah. the deal? Is it is it actually microtransactions? Is it DLC? Like, what are we looking at? So when you, if you were to buy the collect edition of the game, right, you'd uh-huh. get base game, you'd get some like, you know, cosmetic shit or whatever. But you'd also then get like, oh, as like a starter pack for you as a, as a player, you'd get like an extra uh, fast travel item. It lets you sort of, you throw it in the air, you fast travel, the item's used. You get an extra wake stone shard, which lets you uh, revive either yourself or another player or another sort of NPC in the game if you die, right? You. And that's one of three things, right? So that, those things are are all in the game and you can find them all in the game and they're all, you know, uh, one-time use items. Yeah. You know, you use it and it's gone and you can't rebuy them. Once you buy it and use it, like you have that for every playthrough you do. If you started a new game or, or a new game plus, that item would still be there as like a, you know, here's a bonus for oh. starting the game kind of thing. But because you can buy those separately, people were really over exaggerating the fact that, oh, this game's pay to win. Oh, they've intentionally withheld these things from you to then go in and buy them. They want you to, oh, they want you to to go and buy these over and over again. That's why they've made like fast travel. That's... But actually, I've not felt that. You know, I've not at any point has, at no point has the game ever mentioned to me that there's microtransactions. At no point has the game ever made me feel like, So oh, wait, once you're in game, you can pay for money. them though? Yeah, but you, you get you find them or you buy them in the shops or whatever with but real like, money. There's but, nothing in the microtransactions that are exclusive to that or that buying that would give you a longer no, no, bonus. No, no, I hear you. So let, let, me, let me just get this clarifying question because because I, I I guess I'm confused by the controversy. Um, yeah. So are you telling me that if I buy the collectors, the special edition of the game, I'll get these when I roll a new character, right? Yeah. But in game, if I mm-hmm. want to get those items. Is there a way to use real money to buy no. items? No, 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 no. You, you would have to back That's out That's not the microtransactions. Game. There's probably, I think on the, the start menu, there is a link to the store, and that takes you out to Steam, the PlayStation or Xbox store or whatever, and then it's got a list of DLCs that you buy it. Once you've bought it, and if you have the collector's edition, you then can't buy a second one of those. You can only ever buy the one right. of them. And if you buy so, the base edition, I'm imagining you can upgrade to get that DLC or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like a bundle of them. It's like the collector's edition bundle. That's not... Whatever, but, that's yeah, nothing. It's really, that's it's just not a new. Boost. Like yeah, that's exactly, been a yeah. thing for how long? Yeah, and it's crazy that for some reason Dragon's Dogma Two is the game that's been getting all the flack for this. When you have other Capcom games, Resident Evil Four has like, you know, unlock guns by spending this. Monster Hunter is full of stuff like this, right? And these games that are all great games, and I think I think have managed to completely avoid any criticism because of this. Yeah. Dragon's Dogma 2, for some reason, all of the talk around the game, you know, it had a, it had like one of the most negative responses on Steam. You can get at launch. Because people are like, oh, microtransactions, they've sort of like, it's pay to win. But it's not, you know, it's not that. these PC and I... players are just mad that this game doesn't run on their rig. Yeah, I think there's probably an like, element of You know what I'm saying? Online. Like, yeah. I, like, and like, I hate to like, you know, um, I don't know, like, like play into the like, oh, you know, PC gamers, console gamers, whatever, right? But like, that feels so like such a weird thing to complain about when it's like, yeah. I, like literally going as far back as, I don't know, like the Xbox, like, like, you know, like, like remember the horse DLC in Skyrim? Yeah. Like that was like the first DLC that controversy. Like, but it's like, like the concept of like pre-ordering a game, a version of the game that costs more money and getting like little perks or whatever is mm-hmm. like par for the course. Like if yeah, you don't like, like it, don't buy it. Like, what are like who mm-hmm. cares you know it's people like people didn't seem to mind when you when you um when you pre-ordered the game and that was sort of included as like oh you'll also get an extra wake stone shard you'll get an extra fairy stone all this stuff that that people didn't seem to care then as soon as the game was released and those things were then also available to buy for those who didn't get the special edition of the game as separate things people was that, that's off. and the i do thing? think they're, I like think they're mad that it's that's that's, that's, that's the controversy around know. that yeah but I do think there is an element of like the people are right to um, 
be upset that the game doesn't run like people you know people don't have great pcs you, a game like this if you know it runs on re engine i played through resident evil 4 on the steam deck and this, you couldn't even get this game running at like 15 fps on the steam well, deck like it's just so poorly optimized and it isn't it is an optimization issue and it does need to be fixed there is a clear lot going on here but i don't know how much of it needs to be yeah, going on yeah. you know what i mean like you can make the game run better by going around and killing npcs because it is constantly working on the physics of the um you know each character has its own height and its own weight and it interacts with well, the environment let me ask you this though and for some reason it's calculating an entire city does, of does those the game spot. run fine on a decent rig at 30 fps or is it when you're trying to yeah. upscale it to a high resolution that it has a problem well i'm running it in 1440p and i'm getting like mostly 60 and then it sort of bucks down to mm -hmm. 45 or whatever in the cities but like why uh, is that unacceptable like you don't think uh, that though right so it's like or do you well no I, I i do think it's poorly optimized i do think that i think that you know my pc cost me a thousand pounds right yeah there's there's no you know you shouldn't be able to you you should be able to play this game on lower end rig there should be a way for you to turn the settings down control and like but you know you should be able to run it on weaker hardware but the problem isn't that the hardware's that you know hardware's not strong enough for it the problem is they haven't optimized it well enough because but i guess my question is isn't isn't part of the reason that it runs poorly in in cities specifically because of the density of the cities yeah ish but like i don't think this is any more dense than any other city i've ever played i've never i've not played you know you think back to like skyrim or and while the cities like the design of them is quite dense it's not mm -hmm. like they're packed with all these npcs that are always constantly doing things not uh -huh. even always loaded in it's just always calculating them for some reason um it's very cpu it's a very cpu heavy game like i could turn my settings all the way down and get the same performance this is on my old one as soon as i get a new cpu bang it's running a lot better and gotcha. i don't think that that should be you shouldn't have to buy an ex like a great rig to have an acceptable playing experience and you should be able is, to at least what is acceptable though happen. i guess I mean, I mean i guess well because it seems like the performance is fine on consoles, right? But like, no, I guess the no, argument... It's not. No? No, okay. it's not. No, no, no. The performance on consoles, it, it, is, it was an unlocked, targeted at 30 FPS. Yeah. But it could run anywhere between like 15 and like 35. It's dipping down to 15. Okay. It dips. Oh, yeah. The cities dip. You know, at no point... There's no... You don't go in the city in, in, on console and you're having the exact same experience. You, yeah. it, it is just a... a you know, the, the outside of the world where I'm getting 60 FPS... You have to get 30 FPS on console. There's no way it can go any higher. Yeah, of course. Um, and that's an optimization thing. You know, I do also think there's a lot. There's probably a lot of high uh, resolution models that don't need to be in there. You know, there's. Mm. Um, I remember when I think it's City Skyline Two maybe came out last year, mm. and it ran so badly on PC, and that's because people's um, all of the NPCs, teeny tiny little people <laughs> in this big city builder, when they when you open that model, there were like incredibly high. Uh, polygon counts on each individual tooth in that character's head and so it was the game had to you know run all of these really high quality models for teeny tiny people like that that you couldn't even yeah. see their head let alone the teeth in their head and i think it's another thing like that where there's just they've, there's too much going on at once they need to sort of buck some stuff up and um turn some stuff down and because there's just i don't feel like for how much of a strain on cpus it is it's not doing anything more complex than i think i've seen before you know, you run around a city and people will just pop up next to you and you speak to them and they'll give you a bit of text and, you know, they'll go about their day. Sure, they'll go, right, it's two o'clock, let's go over here, right, it's four o'clock, let's go over here. But Majora's mastered that in sure. on, the, on the N64. It's it, I don't think it, you know, but I'm being well, again, That's why it, I ask, right? It's but... like, is it a density thing? Is it that there are a lot of these NPCs that have deep, you know, um, nah. systems attached to them? Because then it's like, nah. you know, that makes sense, I guess, right? But... I think the problem is that every NPC, whether they are a an important character of which there's not tons of them, or they're just someone that lives in a house or is walking around the town, they all have the same level of like importance attached to them from a physics and sort of logic yeah. point of view. And I think yeah. that's a problem. But but that's not to say that the game isn't phenomenal. And I'm not, you know, I'm having a great time with the combat. I'm having a great time with the exploration. I'm I mean, you played a ton of it, it, right? Oh yeah, I played like. Uh, let's find out because I've got it open here. Uh, I played forty hours. Um, oh my gosh! And I wow. spent like a good, good, good chunk of that over the Easter weekend. I had four days off. Um, I played a bunch of this. Cat was playing a bunch of Sims. We were just sort of like you know, sweating out in our pants all weekend. You know, um, but I think the game looks incredible. I think it plays really well. I think the um, the the quests feel really. Uh, it feels really natural when you're sort of walking around and there's not a quest marker. You walk around and someone to come up to you. And go, oh, you're the Arisen. Can you help me with this, please? And then 
the pawns will go, I think I know where to go here. And they'll take you somewhere. And as you're exploring, the pawns will say to you, oh, have you tried looking over here? Or, you know, there's like, you know, things you see on the map. You're like, oh, I want to go up and see what's up there. And sometimes there's nothing and sometimes there is something. Um, but I think it's just, it's it's quite engrossing. And I'm I'm just really enjoying it. I'm having a great time with it. I think that the, the negativity surrounding the game's launch and the game's performance are taking away from what is a really good RPG. And I think that the the reviews, the critic reviews that were released prior to all of this sort of show a, a better idea of what the game is and what's coming out of the game because like i i'm taking loads of screenshots and taking loads of videos i'm having a lot of fun with the combat i'm laughing a lot i'm you know uh, enjoying some of the characters i'm enjoying changing my vocation and finding gear and leveling it up and like exploring through caves all the good stuff you like in an rpg and there's a lot of that here and i'm really enjoying it um especially as someone that really likes sort of action games um you know, there's a lot of like Monster Hunter feeling stuff in here. There's some Dark Soulsy stuff in here. You know, it's 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 just good time. I'm enjoying it, and um, I think I think I'd probably recommend if you're playing it on console uh, to wait until there's more balance, uh, like you know, um, yeah. performance patches. You know, they've they've locked it to a, they've locked it to 30 FPS as an option. They've uh, allowed you to turn off ray tracing. The stuff they've done to sort of make it run a bit better. But I think if you're playing it on PC and you don't have like a, a, a good rig, just for reference, if anyone is interested to know what my sort of specs are to compare to their own PC, I have a Ryzen 5 5800 X3D uh, and a 2080 Ti. Um, so, you know, by all accounts, I should be able to play anything at 1440p and that there's still slight issues yeah. with this game. Um, so if you are if you don't have that or you've got like a weaker processor, I had a 3600 before, which is older, weaker runs most things fine because this is a very cpu intensive game I, i've decided to upgrade um so if you if you have sort of a weaker system or an older system where your you know specs maybe don't line up with mine uh then maybe wait for more performance stuff but if you, i think if you can lock it to 30 and handle it because um that is what they recommend i think the recommended specs are for 4k 30 or 1080p 30 like on pc i do think that you should be able to run anything at least at 60 FPS on PC. I think that you, you should be able to tweak the settings to achieve that in some way. And this game just this doesn't have that, you know. Um, Assuming you have no... a high-end rig, right? Well, no, I think I think you should be able to play anything at 60 FPS if you because a lot of the time you should be able to turn down settings, right? But there's no way to turn down the settings that are specifically causing problems in this game. I can't turn mm. down NPC density. I can't turn off a load of this stuff, you know. I can turn the graphics settings all the way down and still have exactly the same experience in the sound gotcha. and that because it's not it's not that it's too good looking or it's, you know, my graphics car can't handle it. It's that the CPU is is hitting 100% while most GPU is running at like 40%. You know, there should be more balance. There should be, you know, a, um, there should be more optimization. And I think they're working on it. And I think they they are listening. So, yes, good game. Good game. All right. Very nice. So we're 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 nearing the end of the road here but i, I did want to answer another uh, question that we've had we have from andrew valentine that we've been sitting on for quite some time uh and you can tell how old it is because the first half of it was asking for bafta predictions which have long come and gone um but uh <laughs> andrew valentine wrote it into the discourse around final fantasy 7 rebirth suggests it's either the greatest game ever made or a side quest infested borgasm and he takes from anyone on the pod who's played it uh, I've been playing it since uh, release, and uh, I, I've kind of like casually mentioned it um, on the show, but I haven't really gotten a chance to talk about it. Uh, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Like I think um, I think if you liked the uh, like part one of remake, right? Like I think the the main path of it is um, I think very similar to the experience you would have had there. You know, I think like the the main beats of the story like hit just as hard. It feels great to be back with the cast. Um, I think it will almost definitely win soundtrack of the year um, because, oh my God, it just goes so unbelievably hard. <laughs> um, ridiculous. Yeah. More so or, than Pepper Grinder? Like, I, and you know how much I like that soundtrack. Yeah. Like, just because of like, the, the, the dynamic soundtrack in it is fucking nuts. It has a system where uh, every single, you know, environment in the game has its own soundtrack, right? Um, and whenever a fight happens, rather than there being, like, battle music, there's a battle version of the theme, and they seamlessly move between the two, and it's just such a cool effect, you know? Did you ever play Nero Somerset? No, I haven't. 
they had a lot of that in that game where it's like there'll be like the theme of the area and then the battle will kick in then the they'll ramp up the sort of background instruments and then they'll bring in the the singing and then it all sort of crescendos oh, that's up. really cool <laughs> but on the second playthrough when you play the character that can hack when you're in the middle of it and it's playing the theme song, when you hack an enemy, it then cuts seamlessly into a chiptune version of that. Oh, that's awesome. Song. And then when you and then you come back out, I love and that. It's exactly. It's really, really good. I think you'd enjoy that if you like that. Yeah, I should I should really get around to that one. Um I agree. But yeah, I think uh I think, you know, when it comes to like all of the the elements that that the first game did well, I think all of that is like definitely still on display here. Where like I think the combat is really satisfying. The new character, um, Red, that thirteen that's been added into like the main cast, um, I think is is really fun and like plays quite a bit differently than the characters you would have been used to playing with the, from the first game. Um, so like it it adds like an, a new fun dynamic to gameplay for sure. And I just think that that battle system is like so satisfying. If if you like um, action RPGs, like if you're you know someone who is like you know a fan of like Kingdom Hearts or like any of those kinds of games, right? Like it just does such a good job of i think maintaining the spirit of turn-based combat while you know giving you something that feels like a little bit different right and like a little bit more you know i guess modern for some people that maybe feel that's old-fashioned um mm -hmm. and i think that that works really well right and and like the the additions and the the uh innovations that they made to the battle system i think we're we're all good and like have made it deeper and and more fun um and have give you like more things to juggle like as you're trying to um like turn the tide in a battle like you just have more tools than you used to have and um it doesn't feel like what i didn't like about kingdom hearts 3 where you get to a point where it's just like bloated there's too much going on and it feels like noisy right it, it, it never feels like that um but it does like add depth and and i think add to the kind of like chaotic bouncy nature of of the combat which i really like um as someone who stopped playing Kingdom Hearts after Kingdom Hearts 2, when I saw the first trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3, mm -hmm. and it was just like, I'm doing a Disney ride attack now, and I'm doing a different Disney ride attack now, and I'm riding on a roller coaster with my keyblade. I was like, what's happened? To yeah, Kingdom Hearts? I mean, what's, those what's are happening here. <laughs> I, I genuinely think that game is like 25% better if you just remove that as a mechanic because it's mm -hmm. miserable. And like, uh, there's a huge problem in that game where like everything is connected to the action button, which is triangle, but you don't have the ability to be like, I don't want to do that one. I want to do like, you know, whatever. So it's just like, you'd have to sit through these things so many goddamn times. It's so annoying. Um, I regularly think about going back to Kingdom Hearts, but stuff like that really just puts me off. I, I couldn't finish three. I got so frustrated with really? it. Really? Like, yeah, and it's like, I waited for it for like fucking 10 years, longer, mm. I don't even know um i'd like to go back and finish it but like yeah i mean it's frustrating because of how much i love uh one and two and like have so much affection for that series but like man like three is just bloated and i think this game like avoids a lot of those kinds of uh i don't want to say tendencies what's the word i'm looking for i don't I guess, I guess it avoids a lot of those pitfalls right of like the ways that it's like okay it's a sequel it's got to be bigger and badder and it's like it is, and I think most of the time that feels good. The only thing that I think doesn't work for me holistically is the the open world of it all. I think that there mm -hmm. are to, to say that it's like a you know like a bloated side quest like that. I don't think it's that. I think I think what I'm realizing is that in the first game I felt very incentivized to do every side quest, and um, and I did most of them. Whereas in this one, I'm kind of getting the impression that you can kind of pick and choose a little bit more. And that like, you know, uh, it, it's kind of more the way I pl pl might play something like Horizon or, or something like that, where it's like, eh, like this, this one isn't like speaking to me right now. I'm going to skip it and maybe mm -hmm. I'll, you know, maybe I won't be able to do it for a while, but I can come back and do it later if I want to. And, you know, like I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm al allowing myself a little bit more like, let me just go with the flow. Like if I feel like doing a side quest because it looks interesting or I'm interested in, you know, deepening a relationship with the character that it's connected to or whatever, then great, I'll go do that. But if it's like, ah, like this one's a fetch quest and I don't feel like doing that, it's like, oh, I won't do it then. I'll move on, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, you got you probably don't gain 
practical things you gain from doing this like well i can miss that that's fine yeah and i think it's built out in a way where each one has some story and and some reward so like mm-hmm. i could see someone being like oh i have to do everything and if i don't i'm gonna miss out and i think the 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 moment i was like oh i don't need to play it that way i found myself enjoying it more right like not forcing myself to engage with every single thing that it uh is is presenting me with as an option right like is is not always necessarily the way to go um and yeah and i think once i did that and i was like moving the main story around like a little bit quicker um i kind of got more in the rhythm of the game and then i was more excited to do the open world stuff like i remember i hit a point where i was like Mm -hmm. okay like you're going to advance the story and you won't be able to do this side quest if you if you move on. And I was like, oh, I do want to do that side quest, actually. So let me go do that and I'll clear out these other two that I'm interested in and then I'll move on. Right. And I skipped one that I just was like, ah, I don't feel like running around the map to do this right now. Um, and the other ones were, you know, like their location made them more attractive to me as well. Right. So like, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I guess. I had a moment where I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this open world because it kind of reminds me of God of War in a little bit in that like it's very like chapter oriented. So it'll be like you're in this section of the open world and the the world is open and all connected, but it's not like Tears of the Kingdom or something like that where I'm just kind of running around the map, you know, whatever. It's very like. You need to be on, a, a, you know, you need to ride a chocobo to get to this section. And then once you're in this section of the map, it kind of closes off that other section. And, like, you can go back to that section. Mm-hmm. But, like, each section has its own fauna and its own side quests and its own whatever, whatever. So, like, that stuff, I think, when it works, it works. When it doesn't, it there are moments where I feel like maybe it's, it like, it, it's, it's, like, God of War does a better job, I think, of when you go down a path and there's not something that's like a story or a side quest. It'll be like, here's an enemy closet and some treasure. And like, there's always a thing for you to do. And mm-hmm. you mentioned that in Dragon's Dogma where like I've had moments where I'm like, oh, this is where it wants me to go. And then it's like, ah, no, it wasn't. Like, I made a wrong turn and I just end up in a corner where there's nothing for me to do. And it's like, right, I okay. backtrack, what's and, the, you know. Oh. What's the point if you're going that way, you know? Yeah, and it, and it becomes, like, annoying because I think the first game is very linear, and I never really had that problem. So the fact that this is, like, the gimmick here is that the world is more open, and it's like, okay, but, like, what are you doing with that? And I don't think the answer is extremely satisfying. I don't think that the game needed to be as open as it is. And I think that your ability to enjoy the game uh, at least my ability to enjoy the game was definitely increased when I kind of stopped thinking about it as an open world and was just like, why don't I just play it the way I played the first one? And when a side quest interest piques my interest, I'll go and chase that thread, right? And like playing it that way, which I guess is like maybe a little bit more the way play- people play something like The Witcher or whatever, right? Where it's like, yeah, let mm-hmm. a couple of them stack up or whatever and like advance the main story when you feel like it and don't when you don't. Um yeah, that once I got in that rhythm, it was very like, okay, like I, I see what they want me to get out of this open world. It's not a thing I need to comb over every single inch of because there's not going to be shit for me in every single direction. I think some of the size is more about like, uh, it's almost like a theme park, right? Where it's like, it's about creating the sense of of depth that like, oh, this feels bigger than it is because it's not really an open mm-hmm. world. It's like open areas, right? It's It's more like, how it is in in you know Final Fantasy 16 last year only I think even that game maybe did a better job a better job of um kind of signposting me so that like when I was trying to go somewhere it was like I was not going off the beaten path and then ending up in like a corner somewhere right um and granted I think the amount of times I've had that happen versus the amount of times that I've just gotten funneled down the path fine are are definitely like I'm probably making it sound like more of a problem than it is, but I guess my point in doing that is I can see that criticism. Um, but I think that that to me anyway, that as a point of friction became less as I got past that kind of like four or five hour mark. And I was like more comfortable with the rhythm of the game and like what it was trying to do. Um, and now I'm like, you know, I don't know, maybe 30 hours into it. And like my understanding mm-hmm. is that it's in the neighborhood of like 60 and plus to to roll. So like I'm, you know, I'm I'm still well, uh, you know, uh I've still got a long way to go on my journey with it, you know. And um 
I think if it maintains the the quality and the steam that it has right now, um, it's definitely a game I imagine will be on the upper echelon of of what I've you know got near the game of the year list because I, I think there's a reason that this game looms like so uh, like has such a big shadow for people. Like there is really something about its setting and its cast of characters that I think is like very special like it it it, it just has a oh yeah it's timeless yeah. isn't it everyone knows that even people don't know i don't know anything about final fantasy i don't really have i've not really played much uh of seven at all um but i still know all the characters and i still know sort of a lot of the main story beats because they have just and, and i, I the think game. i think there's something to be said where like sometimes when that happens like it's nostalgia right and it's like this game came out mm-hmm. at an important important time and it was it was big at the you know whatever whatever right and maybe it doesn't hold up whatever but like, I you, I spend time where I'm just like, man, like the the character designs are so damn strong. Like every character's outfit is so fucking iconic. Like and like, you know, Cloud's sword, right? And like the you know, like um, the the imagery of like uh uh, like like Barrett's gun arm, and like you know, mm-hmm. like some of those things are just like damn like i i get why especially if you played it at like the right age at the right time that you would just be so captivated by it and the fact that like it does have some pretty you know deep themes that it wants to explore like not only just about like environmentalism and things like that but like about like destiny and and you know like the like the nature of of time and relationships and and like all these things that are like being explored in this very like wild bombastic comic booky saturday morning cartoon type way but that still has this like real heart to it you know and this like sense it's like it's what i think people connect with about kingdom hearts right where it's like this is like wacky and and really over the top but like i'm in like and and like i believe it you know and even though it's very unbelievable and like that is it's special right like there you, you don't often get mm-hmm. super weird shit that breaks into the mainstream consciousness and like connects with people and like sticks around like this and like i i get it you know as somebody who never played the original that like has always it's always been a gap for me right um because by the time i was a kid or old enough to really play final fantasy like i played nine and i played ten and seven was you know just old right it was above my pay grade um yeah so like yeah like it it is i think really cool that they found a way to bring it back and recontextualize it and bring it you know something new for a new generation and that the way that they decided to tackle it makes it something new so that if you have played the original like it's not just a shot for shot remake it's also trying to like add to the legacy which i think is cool um i know people's mileage may vary on that but um yeah i think i think it's really really solid and and a really successful um sequel to a game that i thought was one of the the best games the year that it came out so yeah i think like if you're on the fence right like you know if you've not played the original or whatever um you don't necessarily have to like you could just jump in on this one i think but um yeah i I think they're really really good games they're worth playing whether you're an an old fan or a new one you haven't sold me unfortunately but uh, i'm glad you're enjoying it (laughs) that's that's all right i know i know uh you and steve are 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 out on it you know but uh i don't know you might you might want to give it a shot one day maybe one day anyway uh thank you to everybody who wrote in i i hope we uh caught up on all the games you wanted to hear us talk about sorry steve was uh not able to get his two cents in on a couple of them but he didn't play most of these games so we're fine Um, But yeah, thank you guys for joining us for another episode. Thanks for writing in. Remember, if you want to write in uh, for next week's show, if you want to tell us about your favorite April Fool's stories, you want to tell us about what you've been playing, what other games we should be checking out, uh, or other games that you know we've played that you want to hear us talk about some more, you can write in with all that and much more at flipscreen.games. That's our website where you can find all the ways you can get involved, all the ways you can show your support, all the ways that you can get involved in the community. Uh, are right there, just one click away. However you choose to get involved, we thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Flip Screen Games Podcast. For the crew, I've been Pete, he's been Max. We'll see you next week.